Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and today we are finishing our playlist on the 2024 external exams for Queensland General Maths. And it's a question about earth geometry and time zones. Question seven from paper two, a complex question. Now, if you'd like to know how to engage further with me here at McClutchy Maths, the best way is some of these ideas. Firstly, you could like and subscribe or you could tell someone about the video, why not consider sharing the link with a friend, or even if you're a teacher, putting the link on your class OneNote. You could consider telling us in the comments if you find the video helpful, but even more than saying thanks in that way, why not consider donating $2 using Super Thanks, the little love heart button that enables us to keep these videos being produced because there's a lot of hours that goes into every single one. Okay, let's look at question seven worth seven marks. A non-stop flight departs Sydney, and we've got that universal um, coordinated time of UTC plus 10 at 9.50 p.m. Tuesday local time and arrives in Los Angeles at UTC minus 8 at 6.50 p.m. Tuesday local time. Flight speed is assumed to be constant. Determine the local time and day in Sydney when the flight distance travelled is 4,828 kilometres with 7,248 kilometres remaining. Now this question is a bit of a doozy. We've got a lot going on in here, a lot of information. So we might want to start by working out some flight distances. So we know that part way in, we've got this distance of 4,028 and there's 7,000 more to go. So if I work out those two added together, I'm going to work out that the total flight length is 12,070 kilometers. And so now I can actually use that information to work out some more things. So firstly, let's look at the time difference between Los Angeles and Sydney. So we've got one is at positive 10, the other one is at negative eight, and the time difference means takeaway, so negative, negative makes a positive. So 10 plus eight means we've got an 18 hour difference between Sydney and Los Angeles. So I've got this information here about the flight distance, now I've got some information about a time difference. Now because I've calculated both of those things, I get one mark. You might be thinking, oh, that's a lot for one mark. That, that's how it was ac ac actually determined in the marking scheme. So now I've got those two pieces of information, it's going to help me with everything else. So now I've got this time difference of 18 hours between Sydney and between Los Angeles. So the local time and day in Sydney when that flight arrives. Now it's left at 9.50 p.m. Let's work out what time it is in Sydney when that flight gets there. So we've got this 18 hour time difference. So I'm gonna take the 6.50 p.m. from Tuesday at 18 hours and when the flight arrives in Los Angeles, it's going to be um, a certain time in Sydney. Now, I find adding 18 hours to 6.50 p.m. a little bit annoying. So I always break things up into 12 hours because then I can switch the 6.50 p.m. to 6.50 a.m. the next day. And then all I've got to do is add eight, uh, six more hours, which means that when the time in Sydney, when that plane has arrived in Los Angeles is Wednesday, 12.50 p.m. What I'm trying to do here is work out how long the flight is. Okay, so now that I've done this, I get another mark. Okay, so my flight duration was Wednesday, 12.50 p.m. That's when it landed, it's Sydney time. Take away Sydney time when it left. So it's always good to have one place's time. You could have done this a different way. You could have probably worked from Los Angeles, but we're working from Sydney to work out that length of that flight time. Okay, so. Um, if I take 12.50 p.m. and work backwards to 9.50 p.m. the night before, I end up with um, 12 hours plus the three hours going back to 9.50 makes a 15 hour flight and I'm gonna get another mark for working out the length of the flight. Okay, so I've got this 15 hour duration. Now I need to, I'm working from this local time and day in Sydney. What I really wanna know here is how far into the journey, how many hours have I been flying um, if I've done 4,828. So what I'm gonna be looking at here is what percentage of the total time, um, that's what I'm doing here. But remember that total time or total distance we worked out was 12,070. So what, what proportion or what fraction of 12,070 is that? Well, it's actually 40% of the flight is completed. So now that I know that 40% of the flight is completed, um, I'm gonna get another mark. And we know that that flight duration was 15 hours. So let's work out 40% of 15 hours, so four, um, we're gonna do 40 over 100, which is what 40% is. Multiply that by the 15 hour duration. 40% of the flights completed, it's six hours in. So what I'm gonna do now is add those six hours to my start time. So remember I departed at 9.50 p.m. 
and I was flying for six hours to get to this stage. So 9.50 plus six makes 3.50 a.m. on Wednesday is where I am, Sydney time, 4,828 kilometers into the flight. So I'm gonna get my next mark. Now you might be wondering, hang on, that's not adding up to seven marks, but yes, there was another mark about showing the logical communication and communicating the key steps. This is the first time on this paper we've seen this one. In past papers, it sometimes appears two or three times. But this is probably one of those really complex questions. It's the final question on the paper. It really is only adopting knowledge about um, uh, time zones and about time, um, time differences, not really engaging your latitude and longitude, although when you see this kilometers, a lot of people may have gone down that rabbit hole. The real complexity here is working out that percentage and knowing that I had to use my knowledge of percentages to work out that time, excuse me, that time. So you could have gone about this in different orders and different ways. It's all about that communication being really important to get that seventh mark. Well, if you've got anything that you would like to know or any questions about this question, email me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Please don't write your questions in the comments. It's so hard to explain it in the space given. Um, very hard to do mathematics and show working and things like that. So please email me if you've got questions. Otherwise, thank you for staying with me for the whole series. I hope it was really helpful for you. Best of luck with your external exams. I wish you all the best. Have a wonderful day.